Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel. In this video, we do additional combining techniques. We have seen the maximum ratio combining, and in this video, we'll cover, we'll look at equal gain combining, its performance, selection gain combining, its performance. We'll look at special type of selection combining, which is switched combining. We'll look at what happens if we have correlated branches, and we'll look at coding diversity, the difference between transmitter and receiver diversity, and we'll conclude with some exa examples and exercise. So let's take it from there. Performance other of other combining techniques. Uh, as we mentioned before, we have the distribution of gamma and we have the, the modulation technique, and we need to represent uh, gamma B in terms of gamma K. This, is, this, this comes from the, from the specific, uh, specific com uh, combining, combining techniques like equal gain, R, MRC, and so on. For the equal gain, for example, you find out that what we do is just adding uh, all the signals together. If we if we do the analysis again without going into details, that we'll, we'll find that we're getting different analysis than MRC because here, uh, when we multiply by alpha, even the noise itself gets scaled in the case of MRC, but here the noise will not be scaled. Now, uh, if we continue with analysis, we can find the expressions for every, every one of them. But for the case of equal gain combining, we just, we, we for the case of equal uh, gain combined, only co-phasing, no closed form distribution of gamma B can be generated. Only uh, co-phasing, we don't scale by alpha, right? So we just adjust the phases and we equally equally combine them. There's no closed form distribu distribution of, of the signal to noise ratio. And for the case of selection combining, we choose the best, uh, or best branch to be the, the specific branch. And if their branches are independent, uh, then the probability that all of them are going to be, I mean, the probability that if we can find, assuming that they are independent, we can deal with the probability as a product of all of them, you know, because we have, they are they are independent of each other. So for the case of Rayleigh fading, we can find really the power is distributed exponentially, so we can get the CDF as um, one minus the exponential decay, and if we have m branches, we will find out that the probability will be scaled or raised to power m. So the mean of this, the mean of um, the signal to noise ratio at the output of the combiner, if we are using selective combining, selection combining, will be gamma B times the sum over one over I. For example, if we have one branch, it's going to be gamma B. If we have two branches, it's going to be one plus half, three branches, one plus half plus one over third, and so on. Of course, this is less than the case of uh, gamma bar for the case of MRC, which was equal to M times gamma bar. Assuming that they are all having the same average, we'll get M times gamma bar. So selection combining is less than maximum ratio combining. And of course, if you look at the threshold combining, it's a special case of selective combining which reduces switching. I'll explain this in the next slide. Now, selecting selective combining as an example of selection diversity, select the best signal among all the signals received from different branches. That's That would be done at the receiving end, of course. And the switching combining, because um, the signal is very a lot, you don't want to be jumping and changing from one uh, branch to another because remember this this crossing would be very high frequency so what we do we do is switching combining i will be following my branch even though the other branch is better here i'll keep going on i will just look at the threshold if i go below if i'm above a threshold then i don't there is no need to switch I, I can still survive so this is called switching combining which is a more realistic version of the selective diversity and switched combining the receiver switches to another signal when the current signal below a, a predefined value, predefined threshold. This is less efficient technique, Taman. This is less efficient, of course, uh, than select, uh, selection combining in terms of uh, probability of error. But in terms of um, hardware and implementation, it's, it's more efficient. A selective diversity, since we are selecting one branch at a time, the probability of error for P for phase shift keying is given by the following equation. Where, where gamma B, where gamma B is the maximum across all branches. 
Of course, given that gamma B is exponentially distributed, where gamma C is uh, the average signal to noise ratio per channel. Okay, so gamma C here is like gamma uh, bar, and gamma K is like is gamma I, which is assumed to be identical for all branches. So we ask ourselves a question: What would be the distribution of gamma B if we pick if we know the individuals and we pick the best one? We are So this has been solved using uh, ordered statistics. The, the PDF of the kth branch of L assuming IID is a basic result of ordered statistics. If you have one branch, we got the probability. If we have two branches, we got the different expression. And in general, if we have L branches or N branches, we can substitute in the following exception. The, diverse, the average of gamma B is given by uh, the following equation. Now it's going to be, uh, this is called the diversity gain. Again, this is similar to the case of uh, this is selection diversity, the expression that we had earlier. Uh, we are just stating it in a different way. It is worth comparing the results with, the, of course, those of maximum ratio combining, which we already did. Okay, we have the correlated branches. For the case of correlated branches, the question, the natural question would be, and this is just a snapshot, a quick snapshot of showing what's the impact of the performance if we are looking at uh, correlated branches because so far we have been assuming that the branches un are uncorrelated so this is the performance over one branch performance over the other branch and if we combine them and there is they're uncorrelated we expect to get high gain the sketch here is by the way is the cdf okay so now uh, if if those branches are are, are correlated let's say with rho equal to 0 0.8 then you expect the performance to degrade uh, dramatically so by increasing l we get more signal to noise ratio but this is assuming that we are um, having uncorrelated branches whenever the branches are, co are correlated of course we get less uh, advantage uh, we mentioned the issue of coding example i'll just uh, coding diversity i will revisit this quickly here coding diversity is like time diversity Coding provides diversity of the order of the minimum distance of the code. Binary repetition codes are um, very primitive. By the way, we mean by the minimum distance is the minimum difference. For example, if you are sending 0, 0, and 1, 1, the minimum distance, the minimum difference between these codes is 2. You have lots of uh, code words, for example, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 for example, 1, 0, 1. The distance between these two, which means the difference between the number of bits is two, sorry, three, because there are three differences in bits. The difference between this one and this one is two. The difference between these two guys is just one. The minimum distance is one. So the, the performance of the code will rely on the minimum difference because you want to keep the differences as, as high as possible. So in binary repetition codes, which are very primitive, the minimum distance is one over R, where R is the number of uh, bits. So for majority class of or classes of codes, the minimum distance is much greater than 1 over R, where R is the number of bits in the repetition. So we have the code provides diversity without much penalizing the transmission rate. So uh, we usually use coding with almost all communication systems if we want to avoid errors. Now, as I said, the repetition code is not a good code. There are other codes. This is just to expose you. There are for example, Hamming codes, Goulet codes, uh, sorry, we have Goulet codes as, as one example, where although we have, that's uh, the rate is one half, where we have uh, every 12 bits are coded in 24 bits. Goulet, Goulet code has a minimum distance of eight, which provides a diversity order of eight, and it only penalizes the bandwidth of by a ratio of one over half, because for every 12 bits, we send 24 bits. Now we'd like also to remind you that there are two types of diversity. There is um, there is transmitter diversity, and we have receiver diversity. So 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 far we have been thinking of receiver diversity. So when we have receiver diversity, then it becomes simple. But if you want to do transmit diversity, then you need a feedback channel to tell the transmitter about the state of the channel. So channel known the transmitter, okay, the diversity order would be m. And array gain would be M. Okay, but 
it's a challenge in it's very challenging in practice to feed back the information to the transmitter and of course if there is no transmitter then we have to use different techniques including alamoti schemes and so on which are beyond the scope here now let's do an example for diversity combining diversity system assume we have a diversity or given a system with diversity with m branches the average signal to noise ratio per branch is 15 db and the target signal to noise ratio is 7 db we can give we can be given the signal to noise ratio required or for example we can be given uh, the probability of error and the type of modulation if that's the case then we need the equation that relates the performance of of the modulation technique that relates between the probability of error and the signal to noise ratio here 7 db is the one that's going to give you 10 raised to the power minus 3 for binary phase shift keying let's assume that we have Rayleigh fading now the question is what is the, the outage probability of selection combining combining for m equal to 1 m equal to 2 m equal to 3 or m equal to 4 we'll do three of them so the first thing you need to know is that the outage probability is 1 minus exponential and because now we assume that the, these branches are going to select and they are independent and so on so we'll, we'll, we'll just get raised to power m so this is the relation that relates outage probability I'm going to show it here in the box that this is the equation to, that we need so gamma naught is the required signal to noise ratio which is 7 db for this linear equation I'm going to convert 7 db to an equivalent linear value of 5 uh, gamma bar the average signal to noise ratio for this is given to be 15 db which is equivalent in linear scale to 31.6 now take these numbers the purple color here substitute and now we just need to change the power so for the case of one shown in blue you get 0.1466 so as you increase the number of diversity order you get 0 0.0215 and if you go to three the probability of outage becomes much much less now that's you're going to multiply this by itself and by itself again so this is why the number becomes less and less I leave it for you to find the case of m equal to 4 please write your answer and share with us the point is just we want to make sure that you don't do mistakes in calculations and we do it properly now time to exercise let's exercise our understanding given a communication system with two independent channels with a common input s and output y1 and y2 so we have diversity of order two let's consider two scenarios our task is assuming the channel to be identified gaussian noise that's the received signal yi whether y1 or y2 is the signal plus noise how would you combine the two in case of identified Gaussian noise the second task assume the channel are fading channel the channels are fading channels because we have two y equals to a times exponential that's the signal is going to be scaled by a complex number amplitude is going to change and phase is going to change plus noise how would you combine to form a maximum likelihood estimate of this how, to, how do we optimally combine the two you can pause the video and think once you're ready you can continue now I will share the answer the solution to this problem that for the case of identified Gaussian noise you just need to take the average if you have two branches three branches you average them out that would reduce the noise variance the signal will emphasize it but the noise would be reduced because the noise is random for the case of fading channels you can do maximum ratio combining and multiply each branch by its conjugate of the path gain so we get the conjugate of this you multiply so this cancels and then we can combine them and add them up together we did not multiply by uh, the conjugate in the case of identified gas and noise because the signal itself is not being scaled by anything so as if we are doing the same thing maximum ratio combining but there is no need to multiply so we just take the average or add them up so noise cancels out and variance decreases here is a summary Francis to conclude 
Here are some references that you might find relative while discrimination chapter 7 that we used in this part. You can also look at linear diversity combining techniques, uh, which is an original paper in 1959. Or you can look at uh, Masoud uh, Salehi and in his book and Proikis, his digital communication. Or you can even look at the MATLAB demos related to like communication channels, uh, modeling, multipath fitting channels. You can look at the toolbox and on all the demos there. So thank you for being good listeners and we'll see you on the next topic.